talk about another problem with RSA encryption. RSA can be used to send secrets, the way I described in the previous one. It can also be used to sign documents. But if you do sign it with RSA signatures, they have a weakness called the existential forgery attack. So you can make an RSA key here. This is making an old-fashioned 512-bit key, which is not the most secure, but it's good enough to demonstrate how it works. This will generate a private key, and it generates it in this um, ASN1 format here, which is just one blob of Base64. And if you want to see what's in there, you use OpenSSL ASN1 parse, and that will open this packed form of the key and let you see the contents and you get N and E and D and P and Q and then some other numbers. So there they are. That's the private key that contains all the information you need like P and Q and D, the numbers you need to receive them. Now if you, of course, you don't want to publish this, that's the private key. You want to publish only the public key which would be just N and E. So there's a command here to create a public key and when you open that you'll see it just contains a modulus and an exponent. And here's the modulus is the 512-bit n, which is the product of two primes. And here's the exponent, which is the one everyone almost always uses, 65537. By the way, in RSA you typically make e small, which means d will be big because your client machines are encrypting data and sending it to a server in the most common case and your client machines might be slow, weak things like cell phones, and your server is big and powerful, so you lower the computational burden on the client by keeping E small, and you compensate by spending more CPU on the server, where D is big. So, to sign a message, what you do, first you have a key pair, and Bob writes a message X, and you calculate the signature by taking x to the d mod n. So you run the plain text through a decryption operation, which of course just creates random junk, but that is the signature. And the point is anybody can verify it by taking the signature to the e mod n, and that will match the original message, or depending on how you do it, the hash of the original message. So this proves two things. It proves that the message has not been altered, and it proves that Bob authored it because the only person that can make a message that will pass this test is the holder of the private key. That's the plan. This is why you have uh, the digital signature standard, which is defined using RSA. The problem is you can do an existential forgery attack. Um, you, if you have a signature and you don't have the private key, you can calculate by s to the e mod n you can calculate a plain text message which will produce that signature now it is garbage the original message was readable text and if you have the correct key you'd make this signature but if you make a simulated one you'll just have garbage like this where i put stars for unprintable characters another printable unprintable f more unprintable question mark this is the guard of garbage you make but you can create a message which matches that signature. And so, if it goes to a human who's going to decrypt it and read it, then it wouldn't pass muster. But if it's going to some kind of automated server process, which says, were you able to correctly sign this message? Oh, that proves you're the administrator. That counts as authentication. That kind of thing will happen. This is one of the big problems with cryptography, is people misuse the cryptographic operations. You have a system designed to create confidentiality, but then you misuse it to be an authentication system, which is not the same thing. So when someone creates a valid encrypted object, you'll assume that proves that they are the holder of the private key, but it may not prove that. And in particular with RSA, it doesn't prove it at all. Anybody with no knowledge of the private key can still create a plain text signature pair that will match. And that's a weakness of this system. And there are quite a few of these weaknesses in these various systems, which is why there's sodium. So let me talk about that. Let's save this one.